Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This is the second video in my seven part series all about what medical school this year was like during COVID-19. This week's video is going to be all about my obstetrics and gynecology rotation, but first, Make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications when I post new videos every single Sunday. Let's get into it. Going into my first rotation, I was extremely excited. I had taken five weeks off from studying for the most part after I'd taken my USMLE step one in late August. And we started back in at the end of September. And the reason why we started back at the end of September was because the school had done a staggered start in order to make sure that there weren't a ton of students on campus all at the same time. And even then they had also optimized classes so that they had a decent amount of students doing online classes and then you would rotate through getting to go in person. Now this didn't impact our year quite so much, mostly because we were in hospital. For me, that meant that I started off my very first day of rotation at the hospital and at our teaching facility. So prior to starting classes, if I remember correctly, I think it was a week before we started, we were all scheduled to come in and get fit for N95 masks. So we get fitted for these masks so that we know which type we need, what size we need when we go into hospital. It's kind of a standard test. They make you do a bunch of weird, sometimes sometimes they kind of seem like weird things. Like the guy had me like, he's like, okay, shake your head while singing a song, which, you know, I was fine with the singing the song part. That wasn't weird. It was the shaking my head part. And he's like, okay, now you need to pace back and forth. So they'd taken the N95 mask and they'd attached a tube to the end of it, which kind of calculates the fit of the mask and make sure that it's fitting properly. So additionally at this day, on top of getting the mask fitting, I also got COVID-19 tested for the first time. So I got to experience what the nasopharyngeal swab was like. And um, I can say from now repeated experience because we got tested throughout the year, approximately every two weeks. It's, it's not the most comfortable experience, but it is entirely bearable. Your eyes water a little bit, your nose is a little runny for the kind of couple of couple of minutes afterwards and then you're fine. And the last thing we did that day was we bought scrubs. So normally in the hospital we'd wear like business casual clothing like this with our white coat on top. I have a video all about the things that I used to keep in my white coat that I will link up here, but we weren't wearing white coats in the hospital anymore and we weren't wearing street clothes in the hospital anymore. Now, I didn't own scrubs prior to going into medical school. Some of my classmates bought them when they were accepted. So I just bought the kind of three pairs from the school and would just wash them very frequently. So then that brings me to my OB-GYN rotation. The first rotation that I did was obstetrics and gynecology. I was assigned to be at a large maternity hospital in Dublin. The really cool thing about this is that this hospital only does obstetric and gynecologic care. Now, it's great to be at a large tertiary center. However, the thing that's really nice about my experience is that we also got to have time at smaller community hospitals around Ireland. So I was sent to Waterford for my very first week of obstetrics and gynecology. I think that that was a great start to my rotation because sometimes in the tertiary centers that are in Dublin, they're so used to having students and they have really complex cases that sometimes it's harder to get involved because of the complexity of the care. Whereas sometimes in a more routine setting, like being at Waterford University Hospital, they get you extremely involved. I remember my very first day, I'd never done an obstetric exam before. I'd watched a video on it just to kind of make myself familiar before my first day. They had us doing them on every single patient we interacted with. It was, okay, do an obstetric examination. Okay, do the obstetric examination. I will confirm your findings. Such a great experience. Came back from Waterford and then I immediately went into my labor week. Everyone gets three days or three nights on the labor ward. So for me, I got three days. I was there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from about seven o'clock in the morning until about eight o'clock at night. During those three days, I helped to deliver seven babies. Let me tell you, there is nothing quite like being involved in the birth of another human being. 
I think it was this week that really cemented for me that I am more of a fan of pediatrics than obstetrics. Because for me, I liked being involved, I liked that Labor Week got us really hands-on, and that I got to experience what it was like to have a labor ward that was almost entirely run by midwifery care, because that's in stark contrast to what you would normally find in North America, and it worked really well here. But I also learned that as soon as the baby was born, my interest lied in the care of the infant, and then at the follow-up visits that I saw in obstetrics, I was very interested in the care of the infant, which isn't to say I wasn't interested in the care of the mothers, it's just that that's where my kind of brain immediately goes is, okay, so how's the infant? What's their APGAR score? How's their respiratory function? That was actually a really defining moment for me in determining that my love does truly lie in pediatrics. Then after that, we rotate through the various obstetric wards, whether it be prenatal, postnatal, and then my last week was spent on gynecology. But because a large part of our obstetrics and gynecology curriculum is focused on obstetric care, it was really nice to get a whole week of gynecology because sometimes, I don't know, it was really nice to get to interact with different patients who had different things because there's such a wide variety of patients that present to obstetric and gynecologic services. Then, to cap everything off, we ended our rotation with an OSCE. And an OSCE is an observed structured clinical examination. It was broken down into five stations that were 10 minutes each. My OSCE started off with a 10 minute counseling station and the counseling station, we were given what it would be the day before. We were just given a patient leaflet on the topic of our OSCE. And I think the biggest thing you learn from doing the counseling station is that it is perfectly fine to say that you don't know. And it's actually really important to say that you don't know sometimes because as medical professionals, we don't know the answer to everything. So then next came uh, a gynecologic examination station. So we were given mannequins and we performed a gyne exam and then we answered questions from the examiner. If you are showing a higher level knowledge, they'll continue to ask you harder and harder questions. So that's the one thing about these kinds of OSCEs is that you always feel leaving like you did poorly because no matter how well you did, the examiner is always going to know more than you and then you're gonna end up with like, <laughs> you're gonna end up with a question that you, there's no possible way you could know the answer to, so you leave feeling like you didn't know anything, even if you could have done very well. Then my next station was a history station. So there was a simulated patient, so an actress was there and it was observed by a clinician, and then I had to take this patient's history. I feel very comfortable with history taking, it's one of the things that I know that I do very well in, so I felt very calm, very relaxed, and that was really that. We get, we again, we get 10 minutes in all of these stations. Then we moved on to the obstetric exam. So in the obstetric exam, there's a model there. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a dummy. Um, and then you have to perform an obstetric exam. And then after performing the obstetric exam, you are asked a series of questions by the examiner. Finally, my last station was the VIVA. Now, a VIVA is a series of oral questions that you're asked by an examiner. So for example, these weren't questions from my VIVA, although I actually, do I remember what they were? But they could be, how do you manage someone with postpartum hemorrhage? And then you'd have to detail verbally how you would manage somebody with the diagnosis that they described. And they could ask you anything that you were supposed to have learned in your five week rotation. So that was probably the scariest one going into it, but I actually felt, because it was the last station that I'd done, I actually felt really calm by the time that I got to it because I'd already been examined for 40 minutes, already been asked a bunch of questions. So I felt decently comfortable. Um, and then at the very end of the year, which has just happened a few weeks ago, we had our written obstetric exam obstetrics and gynae examination. My obstetric rotation was probably my favorite, and that probably has something to do with the fact that it was the least disrupted by COVID. So I started my obstetrics rotation in late September of 2020, and five weeks in was the beginning of November of 2020. And Ireland went into a second lockdown kind of about early, early to mid October, but it didn't really impact my rotation too much because 
things were actually relatively the same before the lockdown as after the lockdown when we went into the hospital. So, that's, and it was probably the rotation where I got to be the most hands-on. And that's really important to me. I find that I learn really well when I get to be super hands-on. And the patients at this hospital, because it was a teaching hospital, most of them were pretty amicable to having you around. The only thing that happened sometimes was that we needed to get certain cases. Uh, we needed to see certain things in order to kind of tick all the boxes to make sure that we were competent to take our exam. Now, what that meant is that if for some reason there was only one patient that week that had the diagnosis that you needed, every single student went to go and see that one patient. And if there's 50 students in the hospital, the patients can get a little bit annoyed with that, especially if there's only one of them and then 50 medical students are trying to get their history and they're telling it for the 50th time and they're like, I don't want to do this. And the thing is, that's something that sometimes I think medical students can forget is that patients are people and they're not just cases, they're not tick boxes that we need to graduate. And that's something that I found myself not really struggling with, but kind of, I felt really empathetic to the patient situation where like they don't want to be telling their story for the 10,000th time to yet another medical student. But at the same time, I also need my requirements in order to finish my rotation. So it puts me in a really hard spot and I, f and I felt really conflicted about that. And I got a lot of solace and comfort from talking to my clinical tutor about that. So for most of our rotations, we're assigned to clinical tutors who answer our questions, who we can go to. They generally mark our assignments. And I talked to them kind of about the struggle that I was having with going to see patients and sometimes getting turned down from taking a patient's history because they're like, I've already talked to such and such a number of medical students today. And they offered me some really great advice. Sometimes patients aren't gonna wanna talk to you, but you still need to get information from them in order to best serve them in their care. I kind of had this realization that approaching patients with as much empathy as possible is all that I can do. All I can do is be the best doctor that I can be with the information that I'm able to get. And I can approach every patient with empathy for their situation because I can understand if I'm having a bad day or if, or if something's happened to me, I don't wanna be asked by like 10 million people about this scary thing that's happened to me that's led me to be in the hospital. That's not comforting at all. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please click the like button, click subscribe, ring the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Also, um, if you're interested in hearing more about my obstetrics rotation, maybe things that I didn't include in this video, please make sure that you read this week's blog post that's associated with this all about my obstetrics rotation. You will find that linked up here as well as down in the description box below. If you have comments about what you want to see me talk about, things you wanna see changed, please write them down in the comment section below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.